He's alive. He's out there. Spoiler warning. What happened to the researchers in the Alaskan facility is still the biggest mystery surrounding True Detective Season 4, but the program has already shown a few details that have given rise to suspicions. Season 4 of True Detective, like its predecessors, capitalizes on the cliché of the hardened police officer by presenting two formidable law enforcement officers, Danvers and Navarro. But its snow-covered Alaskan backdrop and the fascinating way that conservative fantasy and true crime realism interact in the main plot allow it to carve out its own niche in the franchise. Season 4 of True Detective does not alternate between timelines like Season 1 did. Instead, it largely tells a linear story. But much as in Season 1, it introduces a compelling mystery in its first arc, which sets the scene for its murder drama. The enigma centers on the abrupt disappearance of a team of investigators, who were eerily discovered frozen in snow near the conclusion of the show. Did the other researchers get killed by Raymond Clark? The killer of the researcher's identity was revealed. Despite the fact that the killer's identity is still unknown following the second episode of True Detective, Night Country, numerous hints point to Raymond Clark as the possible person who killed his fellow researchers. To begin with, the instant Raymond Clark announced, she's awake. <laughs> she's awake. In the first moments of episode 1, things took a bad turn for the researchers. The fact that Raymond Clark is absent from the frozen researcher's corpse toward the end of True Detective, Night Country's second episode suggests that he may still be alive. Numerous Innis witnesses also assert that Clark was not doing well prior to the researcher's disappearance and would frequently grumble to himself while out in public. The last seconds of episode 2 also show that Clark had the identical spiral tattoo on his breast that was discovered on the foreheads of the researchers who had been frozen. These hints position him as the main suspect in the crime, even if none of them provide proof that he killed his fellow researchers. Salal's connections to the Tuttle family in Season 1 and his obsession with the spiral emblem of the Yellow King cult suggest that Clark was impacted by the same evil powers that dogged Rust and Marty's investigations. True Detective, an explanation of Night Country's corpsical numerous hints to the main enigma can be found in the researcher's corpse. Numerous factors surrounding the researcher's demise point to a murder that was much more complex than a hate crime. The assassin appears appears to have followed a ritual in which he killed the researchers and then submerged them in ice, or he made them remove their garments before forcing them to plunge into freezing cold waters. It's also possible that the murderer intended for police enforcement to discover the researchers frozen because they were conspicuously visible from a considerable height. It appears that the murderer purposefully turned them into corpses so that anyone discovering them frozen would be aware of all the minute details and clues he left on their bodies. The ritualistic aspect of the murder raises the possibility that the killer was in influenced by sinister cultist ideals, even if true detective. Night Country has only made passing references to how it might eventually relate to the Yellow King cult from Season 1. The corpse also shows that the researchers were so confused and in excruciating pain in their last moments that they began plucking out their eyes and even scratching their flesh. They appear to have been plucked from the high-pressure depths of a cold water body and allowed to freeze to death, since Peter also notes that they have damage to their eardrums. Why did the researchers in true detective, Night Country, wear nude clothing? There are two possible possible explanations for the researchers' lack of clothing. There are two possible explanations for why the researchers were naked, depending on the sequence in which the events transpired prior to their freezing. It is possible that they were really hypothermic when they took off their clothing. Severe hypothermia frequently produces a burning sensation that is mistaken for heat. As a result, hypothermic individuals frequently begin undressing ironically. The researchers' clothes were oddly left folded close to the crime scene, even though it appears possible that they might have done the same in true detective, night country. They were definitely not in the condition to fold and line their clothes before freezing to death, even if hypothermia forced them to take off their clothes. This could imply that the murderer forced them to take off their clothes, folding them in a corner before putting them in the river. It is difficult not to wonder, though, why so many of the researchers fled in the scalding cold without shoes and what the killer did to so greatly frighten them. Especially in light of the fact that Danvers and her APF crew only discovered a small number of pairs of shoes close to the frozen corpses. In True Detective, why were the researchers killed. The actual cause of the researchers' deaths in True Detective. Based on their school backgrounds, the researchers were all extremely skilled in earth science-related subjects. Peter responds that they were attempting to find the beginnings of life when Danvers asks what they were doing in Alaska. Whatever they were working on was probably groundbreaking, even though these details may not always explain why they were killed. Their research efforts, meanwhile, might also be a front for more darker activities. Alternatively, their investigation might have turned up something they weren't supposed to find, putting them in the path of some influence 
influential individuals. In the first episode of True Detective Season 4, Danvers discovers a whiteboard with the words, We are all dead, inscribed on it during her initial investigation of the Salal facility. This implies that even before they left the facility, the researchers were fully aware that they would die. The spiral marks on their foreheads suggest that their deaths may have had something to do with the Yellow King cult crimes from True Detective Season 1. Yet only time will tell what ultimately led to their deaths. Based on a number of hints left in Episode 2, Raymond Clark may also be connected to their deaths. The only living researcher is Raymond Clark. What that means there may be one researcher left in True Detective, Night Country. The number of researchers that Danvers and Devaro find frozen in the snow is not disclosed in the first episode of True Detective Season 4. But Danvers does remark that one of the researchers is missing in a brief scene from the show's teaser. In the second episode of True Detective, Raymond Clark is confirmed to be absent from the researcher's combined corpse, with a suggestion that he might be alive. This could indicate that Clark was the murderer from the start. His prior relationship with Annie may suggest that he killed the researchers because they were complicit in Annie's murder, even though his motivations for killing his team members are still unknown. How Annie's death is related to the researchers the explanation of Annie's connection to the researchers' killings. Numerous elements in the first episode of True Detective Season 4 imply a connection between Annie and the deaths of the researchers. Danvers informs Travis that Annie's tongue was severed by her assassins, but no one ever discovered it. In the first scene of Season 4, Episode 1, the delivery man discovers a severed tongue on the ground when he first sees the abandoned Salal facility. Danvers subsequently hypothesizes that the tongue probably belonged to a local lady who tended fishing nets by licking their threads, based on the dents on the tongue. Annie may have been the owner of the tongue in the research center because she was a native Alsican as well, and her tongue was amputated but never found. The spiral marks from Season 1 were also visible on Annie's body, as seen in the pictures in her case file. The same spiral tattoos on their foreheads, as seen in the official trailer for the program, were also present on the frozen researchers, suggesting that the person or individuals who killed Annie were also accountable for the researchers' demise. Danvers discovers that Clark and Annie both own the same jacket when reading over the researchers' and Annie's case files. In addition, she notices that Annie's jacket was damaged where a patch was on Clark's garment. In the second episode of True Detective, Night Country, Navarro and Danvers discover more about Clark's past and discover that he had an affair with Annie. They also learn that four days following Annie's murder, he had the spiral tattooed on his chest. He used to meet Annie in his van, and a visit there reveals that he is likewise preoccupied with the spiral, raising the possibility that both Annie and he were Haster worshippers similar to the Tuttle family. The most important hints and theories regarding the researcher's experience. The first episode of True Detective Season 4 has a lot of hints that provide support for a number of ideas. The first episode of True Detective Season 4 only shows a small portion of the frozen researchers. But even from that little look, it's clear that before they passed away, they were afraid of something or someone. The fact that Danvers says they were killed before they were frozen makes it difficult to ignore the possibility that something other than hypothermia scared them so much. Hypothermia may have left them confused and prompted such a reaction in them. Given the ritualistic nature of their murder, it's possible that the killer's painstaking murderous regimen included forcing them to take off their garments before freezing them. The repeated allusions to the Yellow King spiral symbols may potentially hint at paranormal components that played a role in the researcher's deaths. Given that the researchers were attempting to decode the DNA of an extinct microorganism, as revealed in True Detective, Night Country Episode 2, it's plausible that, in the process of excavating the snow, they accidentally awoke a cosmic being or alien parasite, leaving them vulnerable to strong supernatural forces. A more straightforward explanation for their killings would be that they either made a grave error in judgment or that powerful individuals intimidated them once they found anything ominous during their investigation. Given how the Salal facility was funded by an NGO under the authority of Tuttle United, the Tuttle family's conglomerate, the latter seems more likely in true detective season 4.